Greetings, another little short film about what constitutes a Feldenkrais awareness through movement lesson. I wanted to bring back in something from last week's talk. Remember I was doing, I was doing this movement and the, what's the point in doing that movement? Why would you care about lifting your head off the floor when you're on your stomach? Well, the part that I didn't tell you that I really want you to know is that what happens after an hour lesson when you stand up after a lesson like that, I'm gonna have to lift the camera to talk to you, is that what you find is that your ability to find length through your spine, maybe if I do it this way, and lift up through the front and a sense of support through your spine is really, really, really phenomenally changed by that little simple lesson. So I just wanted to bring that back in. Another thing that sometimes Feldenkrais uh, lessons address is is just basic movement patterns, basic developmental movement patterns, like crawling, for instance. So why would crawling be important? Because crawling is the precursor to walking. And um, crawling, studying crawling really improves our walking. It improves our ability to transfer our weight right to left, front to back. It, it, it improves our ability to rotate through our spine so that we have all the multiple actions that comprise the movement we call walking. More efficient, less wear and tear, and delightful. So if I were doing a crawling lesson, it might look something like this. It might start with I'm going to lift, I'm going to unweight one hand. Oftentimes we use the words unweight rather than lift because lift makes someone do this right away and that's way too fast. And again, that's, that's pushing through the movement threshold. So what if I just unweight my hand? What do I find? Where do I, where do I find support? Do I find it from the same knee, the opposite knee or the opposite hand? Well, I'm feeling it through the same knee the most and then I'm also feeling it through the opposite hand. So I would do that multiple times on both sides, just unweighting, then I could unweight a leg, keeping the foot on the floor. I could unweight the other leg. I could go around a circle, I could unweight the left hand, unweight the right hand, unweight the right knee, unweight the left knee in reverse direction. Then I could start just kind of popcorning, multiple lifting from one to the other. So what started as, God, how the hell am I gonna get my hand off the floor, starts to become simpler and kind of like popcorn and just, you know, I'm not lifting a lot. I'm just unweighting and I'm getting better at knowing where the support is so that the leg or the knee or the hand is lighter. Then I might start thinking about moving forward and back some. Now, moving forward and back on the same side is really less coordinated, isn't it? It's, it's more arduous. It's possible, but it's harder. But if I go opposite leg and hand, which is what we do when we walk, movement is easier. Then what happens if I start to move my knee further and further forward? So I'm still going opposite hand and opposite knee. And eventually I can thread my knee through the opposite side so that I could do the Feldenkrais crawl. And I could do the Feldenkrais crawl backwards. And while I'm showing you the end of this, I just want to remind you that this is a five minute demonstration of a lesson that is gonna take an hour or 45 minutes to do. And I really caution you about just lying down on the, on the floor and doing this um, in 10 minutes because these aren't meant to be lessons that you actually take. They're just meant to be explanations 
of what you might find in a lesson because none of us in our culture really understands the Feldenkrais method the way we understand yoga or Pilates or other things. So thanks for watching. If you, and if you enjoy what you see, leave me a comment, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. Thank you.